This video is an introduction to the VK3 AQZ RF PM1 power meter. The RF PM1 consists of two sections the meter unit, which you see here, and the RF head unit, which is down here. The RF head unit contains the AD8307 RF detector chip. This is a closer view of the RF head which consists of a small aluminium enclosure with a connector at one end and a cable connecting to the meter unit at the other end. The AD8307 detector chip is surface mount and is in the, on the bottom of the board but the designations are printed on the top. The RF detector head also contains adjustments for intercept and slope. In addition, there's a, a light emitting diode which indicates when the RF detector head is energized, as you can see here. This power meter has provision for two RF detector heads, and you'll see one here with a BNC connector. The case will also accept an SO239 if you wish to use that type of connector. As mentioned, the meter unit has provision for two RF detector heads which are plugged into the top of the case. The heads can be selected by a slide switch. The meter unit contains two displays. An analog display, which is very useful for uh, tuned circuits. It uh, shows rapidly changing signal levels. And a digital display, which gives a reading in dB. The front panel of the meter unit contains a couple of switches. One for turning the power on and off and another one for selecting RF detector head or internal battery voltage. The internal battery voltage is read off the analog meter and will give you an indication of when the battery requires replacement. The battery in this meter will continue to work down to about 7.5 volts. There's also a handy little chart on the uh, case which uh, gives you a conversion between dBm, that is the power uh, across 50 ohms, and also the equivalent peak-to-peak -peak voltage and RMS voltage. The RF detector heads have a 50 ohm termination inside them so all the measurements are done at 50 ohms. The RF PM1 power meter can be calibrated by connecting a digital multimeter to a couple of 2 millimeter banana sockets on the top of the case. The 2 millimeter banana sockets match the normal probes on Voltmeter on digital voltmeters. The voltage appearing on the banana sockets is a buffered output directly from the AD8307 chip and is independent of the two meters. It is used for setting the slope of the RF detector. In addition, any modulation on the RF signal that the detector probe is picking up can also be observed on these two terminals. The frequency response, the frequency response of the meter, meter within a dB or so is from 5 kHz to 500 megahertz. There is a small UHF boost circuit in the RF detector head which helps flatten the response above 300 megahertz. The power handling ability of the the meter is around uh, from around plus 16 dBm down to around minus 70 dBm. So a range of 86 dB. The RF detector head will actually respond to signals below 5 kilohertz uh, however, the, uh, the accuracy will fall away. People wishing to use this at audio frequencies can add uh, larger coupling capacitors inside the RF head and uh, the chip itself is capable of going almost down to DC. This is a view inside the meter unit. You'll see the analog meter, the digital meter and a circuit board which contains the processing electronics. Basically consists of a an op amp and some uh, adjustable resistors, connectors, etc. In the back of the case, all of that, uh, all of that is on the front panel. By the way, uh, the back of the case contains a battery, which you can see here. Let's move the uh, front panel out of the way, and a circuit board, which contains the two connectors that feed the RF detector heads. So here you can see the front panel has been folded away, it's on a small loom connecting the, the back of the case and we'll come in closer to the rear panel 
and show you that. There it is there. There's the, uh, the two uh, connectors and a selector switch. There's also the DVM uh, panel which you can also see to the side of it. Uh, there's the DVM panel and there's the rear connector panel. Here's a, here's a closer view of the battery uh, portion. It's held in by a, a metal bracket. The bottom of the case contains a couple of removable feet which uh, are coming into view now. The feet uh, clip into slot slots on the back and, then, and can be just simply unplugged like that. When you're ready to um, put the meter back on its feet, you can clip them back into place. If you don't wish to use the feet, there's also some rubber pads on the bottom which allow you to put the meter flat on a table and uh, help prevent it from sliding around. The RFPM1 meter requires an accurate signal in order to calibrate it. However, if you do not have a, an accurate signal generator capable of putting out, say, 0 dBm or minus 10, or some figure like that, you can also use the VK3 AQZ calibrator, which is a low-cost alternative. The VK3 AQZ calibrator puts out a square wave signal of known uh, output power, in this case, minus 20 dBm. It also has a switch for a level of minus 30 dBm. The idea of that 10 dB change is so you can set the slope of the RF detector head. So it's conveniently located on the front panel. The unusual feature of the calibrator is that it puts out a square wave, whereas the AD8307 chip is designed to work with uh, sine waves. And in fact, the DC output of the chip is... Uh, proportional to the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the RF signal across the input. However, due to an unusual feature of the AD8307 chip, if you feed a square wave in of a certain amplitude, the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of that square wave will produce a DC output equivalent to a sine wave of twice that amplitude and that relationship is very accurate if the square wave is around the minus 20 dBm signal level. Now a square wave peak-to-peak -peak signal can be measured with a digital voltmeter if you if you feed the square wave into an integrator. So you can set the output of this calibrator quite accurately using an accurate digital voltmeter. The output of the minus 20 dBm and the minus 30 dBm signals on the calibrator can be set by a couple of trim pots on the front panel. A digital voltmeter is plugged into the a couple of terminals at the, at the top of the meter, which you can see here, and you can then adjust the, the two levels using the trim pots so that you get a fairly precise minus 20 dBm and minus 30 dBm signal into the RF power meter, and that way you can calibrate the power meter. This relationship between the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the square wave and the sine wave only holds true around the minus... Th 20 to minus 30 dBm. At other levels of input to the chip, that relationship breaks down. So if you wish to measure, for example, the linearity of your detector head over a much wider input range, you really need a very clean sine wave signal. The AQZ calibrator, therefore, also incorporates a sine wave function, and it is simply a low-pass filtered version of the square wave. The output level of the sine wave, which can be selected by couple of switches here can be adjusted by a control and the amount of range of adjustments from around plus uh, 10 to 13 dBm down to around about minus 40 dBm and you can use this sine wave to through a series of switched attenuators to measure your overall linearity of the power meter you have to use a sine wave and that sine wave has to be very clean if the sine wave contains any harmonics or uh, or is slightly distorted, the AD8307 chip will respond to the higher harmonics and this particular chip will work all the way up to 500 megahertz. So it will respond to high order harmonics and give you uh, a reading which makes you believe that the chip's not very, not linear. However, it's not really the chip that's the problem. It's the fact you're feeding a signal into it which contains more than just a sine wave at a fundamental frequency. In this particular calibrator, the sine wave is derived from a square wave. The, the low-pass filter 
uh, offers around about a 45 dB attenuation at the second harmonic of, of, the, of the oscillator. The oscillator is running at 5 megs, so at 10 megs the, the harmonics coming out of the filter are, are quite low. However, they are not perfect. And if you add an additional filter on the output, you'll find that the linearity of your RF detector head appears to improve. What's happened there is you've simply knocked out more of the harmonic energy that's contained within the sine wave. However, as a low-cost alternative and uh, getting you set up so that your power meter is reasonably accurate, this, uh, this is quite a good solution. Uh, the alternative is, a, is a, either an expensive power meter uh, or a very accurate signal generator with a, a good attenuator on the output. And when I say good attenuator, the attenuator has to be good all the way up to 500 megahertz. If any of the signals through the attenuator, any of the harmonics are able to bypass some of the padding, then your attenuator will not give the, 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 the correct answers with this particular detector head. So that's a brief introduction to the RFPM1 power meter. You'll find uh, several applications on my website and on the DVDs that come with the kit in using the power meter for a range of measurements, EMC measurements, uh, filter measurements, um, oscillator levels, etc. It's quite a useful instrument, particularly if you're home brewing, um, a transceiver or something like that. You really need to know RF levels reasonably accurate. And this power meter, uh, although it's not that expensive, will produce some very good results.